All right, if you've seen recent videos, you know that this is the bait that's been delivering for me so well in this 2024 crappie season. I just got in a new pack, ran out on my last trip, ordered them online, can't find them anywhere locally. But conditions are perfect today for sockelet fishing, crappie fishing. So that's what I'm heading out to do. Come along with me. All right, it's been an interesting morning or interesting day since I shot that open. I came to the launch, launched the boat, started putting through a no wake zone to get to where I wanted to fish, opened up one of my holes, realized I didn't have my camera. Turned around, went back to the marina, tied my boat off, pulled the key out, figuring I'd just run home, pulling my trailer, obviously, and go get my cameras. It's about a 10 minute round trip to my house from the marina, so no big deal. I get about three minutes away from the marina and I get rear-ended while sitting at a stoplight. I had to call my wife, she came, left work, went and babysat the boat while I sat, waited for the cops. Then I went and picked up the boat, so that I really don't feel like fishing, not going today. Brought it back home, waited through the midday hours, and then kind of started getting the itch to fish again. So now here I am, it is 3.05 p.m. Sunsets, I don't know, maybe 7.15, somewhere around there. So I got a little while to fish, but we're gonna see what we can catch. <laughs> Hopefully the day starts trending upward, we'll see. All right, it's kind of intermittent cloudy, mostly cloudy, but it kind of keeps getting a little sunny here and there. I hope it stays cloudy. Definitely like fishing these fish on cloudy days. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this tight line jigged slab hunter minnow. Got this on a 1 16th ounce micro jig. And I'm gonna throw this to cypress trees, trying to catch some late spawning sakale. Pretty windy today, that's why I'm not in the marsh. It's blowing out of the south at probably 20 knots or so. Windy day. Water in here looks pretty good. Oh, got a nice tap. There you go, it's a start. It might have been a brim, but who knows, it was a good hit. Ah, oh, sh. Super dangerous going in here. I wrap my jig around this. Oh, and there's a wasp nest, maybe an old one. That's why it's dangerous. All right, we got it. Don't want to take too many chances like that, the way today is going. <laughs> but it was knotted good. No way I was getting this thing back. Man, look how beautiful this is. It certainly looks fishy. Oh, that's a good hit. Good Lord, that's a good hit. That's a beautiful sockele. All right, there we go. Target species, he smoked it, absolutely smoked it. Glad to have him. Oh man, you weren't getting off, dude. You're gonna have to break that line. All right. Get put my boat ride home. What I do with this technique is throw right up to the base of these cypress trees and just steady retrieve. Bring my bait about halfway down the water column. You're gonna have to, if you try this, you're gonna have to figure out what your ratio is on your reel and how fast your bait moves. You're gonna have to slow down or speed up to keep it kind of at that depth. And this bait, this slap hunter minnow, they, they make a, a smaller one than this, but I got the kind of bigger one because I wanna weed out the brim bites. You know, this time of year, you have a lot of brim up on the beds you know, people call them bluegill, you might call them bluegill, but up on the beds, beginning their spawning. And I just don't want to be constantly pecked at by them. Do get some brim bites on this, but it weeds down a lot. Of, oh, well, a lot of them going with this bigger bait. And the sockeye I want to catch have plenty big enough miles to hit this. Of course, the best thing about catching crappie is that you get to eat them. 
So at the end of this video, I'm going to show you a way to cook them that I promise you, you haven't tried yet, and it's fantastic. You know, you can't go wrong just frying these things, of course. They're really, really good fried, but if you get kind of sick of fried fish, I'm going to show you a great alternative. Serve it to your friends that might never leave your house. You have permanent house guests. Oh, one hit me right here. I saw him hit it. I saw him hit it. Did that fish follow me in? Was he spawning way out here? Could be spawning way out here in four and a half feet of water. He's a good fish too. Smoked it. Another snag on one lonely stick. Now some people like to use really light wire hooks. So they can just kind of bend the jig off. Difficult on a twig like that, because it's just not enough to pull against. But if you hang up in one of these cypress trees, of course, that's an option. Do that enough though, and the metal weakens, and it can break off and lose, you can lose fish. Always though, after a snag, I check my line. Make sure it's not nicked. I'm using four pound test, super light. Now, the last video I did fishing that, this technique, a bunch of you suggested that I throw a cork instead. <laughs> and I get it, that's how I used to fish these in the springtime. That's all I ever threw is a cork. And it, I mean, it can definitely be very productive, but it's just not nearly as fun. And I find this to be even more productive. You know, of course, it's great watching a cork go down. Don't deny that, but there's nothing like feeling these fish absolutely tag this bait on such light lines. Just awesome. Just amazing they can hit as hard as they do. And that, to me, is what makes this so much fun. That and eating them. Sounds kind of crazy to say, but pound for pound, Oh, shoot. I don't know if anything hits harder. Oh, goodness. That is a fish. Look at this. It's a bass. That's why. I thought it was hung on a log. It's actually a nice bass. Yes. Real nice bass. All right. About a maybe 12 inch or so. We're going to take him home and eat him. Almost as good eating the sakale. That was so weird. I, th I thought I had a hit, set the hook, and then thought I was in a log. It didn't move at all. And then it took off. I mentioned this bait was too big for brim. <laughs> it's obviously not too big for bass. They have no trouble handling this. Mostly you catch like eight inch bass on this, but you know, this time of year, the bait available to the bass is not very big, generally. The shad are pretty little. Of course, they're gonna eat some crawfish. So they're not really keyed on like monstrous stuff. Not quite yet. Just such a fun way to fish. I just love it. Every time I do it, I think, why don't I do this more? Too busy chasing all those saltwater fish. So I've got viewers all over the country. And one thing I'm curious about is number one, where you from? And number two, when the crappie spawn in your area, when is the peak? In this area, I'd say, well, if we're talking peak, I'm going to say mid-March. It probably runs from early February to the end of April, but I'd say mid-March is the absolute best time. What about in your area? When do you catch them? And I know people fish them year-round. You can catch them out deep after they pull out after the spawn. I give up on them by then. I just fish them when they're up shallow and then chase some other things. But let me know when the spawn is in your area. Also, what's your favorite technique for catching them? You don't have to give away any secrets, obviously, but just in general terms, how do you like to target them? Also, do you prefer fishing them on a cloudy day? I definitely do. I feel like cloudy, kind of breezy days, south wind, return flow, 
those are, in my opinion, are the best days to fish them. It's when they get most active. Definitely seen hard cold fronts completely shut these fish down. Whew, that scared me. Gar or something in front of the boat <laughs> jumped out of my skin. There he is. Oh, shoot. Pulled the hook. A good bite way out here. That's good to know. Another bite. Oh, goodness. Oh, another beautiful sockle. <laughs> God, he broke me off. Glad he broke me off in the boat. Hey, big dude. Man, you tagged it. Took it deep. Look at that. That's what you want to see. That means they're feeding. Wow. Need some pliers to get this one out. If you can skip those baits up under those cypress limbs, that's the best way to catch them. Because they usually are up under there. That wasn't a bad. That wasn't a good flip. Now, this is where I'll throw that cork around something like that. These dollar lilies. And it's super windy today. I'll tell you what. Glad I'm not in the marsh. Go back to the jig. <laughs> That's what I like to do. And I'm out here for fun. Not fishing a tournament, a crappie tournament, which I know are a big thing, like in the Mississippi Delta. When I used to edit Mississippi Sportsman Magazine, we ran a column all about crappie, a lot about tournament fishing. It's a big thing up there. They catch three pounders pretty regularly. I caught a two and a half, or maybe two and change, earlier this year. Got that on video. Beautiful fish. That's my biggest, for sure. I'm really surprised more people don't fish this technique. My buddy Jeff Brule introduced me to it a few years ago. And it's all I do now. It's just, it's just so much more fun. It just is. I know I've already said it, but it just is. I'm telling you, you got to do it. Well, looky there. All right, tell me you tied a bad knot without telling me you tied a bad knot. I tied a bad knot. Got a nice curly cue there. I didn't feel good about that knot, but then I kind of examined it. I'm like, oh, that's good. It's good. Good enough. Clearly, it was not good enough. All right, back in business. Let's see if we can get a fish. Oh, goodness. <clears throat> There's another one. <laughs> I threw right up on the edge of that alligator grass. And that's where he was hiding. Not the fish of the day, but we'll get some fillets off of him and they will be tasty. Man, these fish are all taking, taking this bait so deep. So awesome. Glad to see it. Now I'm fishing a river near my house in Covington, Louisiana, but there are cypress trees obviously all over the south. And I'm positive this technique will work there. We'll find some near your house and give it a try. Let me know what you think. And don't sleep on this slab hunter minnow. It's a big part of the equation in my opinion. I got it in a pool a few months ago. I don't know, maybe January or February. I tried a bunch of Bobby Garland baits to see, see oh shoot, see how they looked. This to me looks second best, but the one that looked the best, I tried and didn't catch any fish on. But as soon as I made the jump, 
to this bait, I started whacking them. Absolutely love this thing. Now it got just a ton of confidence in it. It just works really, really well. And this black and yellow is a great color, just in general. I mean, it's just a great color everywhere, but particularly on this river. I mean, I guess you could call that chartreuse. It's kind of yellowish chartreuse. Oh, goodness. Oh, he came off. That was a good fish. That was a good fish. Well, can't catch them all. Oh, oh Well, that may have been a brim. Because look at that, I'm missing half my tail. I think that was a brim, so let's change that tail out. <clears throat> oh, that's a good fish. I want to see this one. Oh, he came off. Shoot. That may have been a cat. It felt really weird. I don't think it was a sagale. That's, oh goodness, we've had a string of bad luck. That was not a, that was a very good hit. It was not a good fish. Probably a keeper, but just barely. He wasn't big. Oh goodness, that's a good sockle. All right. That was a good tag. That one smoked me. Got it nice and deep, like the others. All right, good black crappie, really pretty. All right, after a super fun trip catching those sakale, now here I am in my kitchen. I'm gonna show you how I cook these things. I cook them a whole bunch of different ways, but this is one of the ways that I cook them that's really, really good. Very, very simple. Actually tastes a lot better than you think it would based on how easy it is. So let me show you what we got. All right, first off, here's some butter. That's about the right amount, probably about, I don't know, maybe half a stick or so. Got our hawk sauce. That's hot sauce with an absolutely fantastic taste. Got some Lee and Perrin's Worcestershire sauce. It's the only brand I use, really like it. Got a lemon. Got some seafood seasoning. I like this Louisiana fish fry brand. But if you like Tony Shastri's or whatever, go ahead and use that, whatever flavor you like. Got some frozen green onions. If you have fresh, of course that's better, but I tend to chop them up and freeze them. Got a bowl of milk and a plate of flour. And here's our fish. Now I store my fish in a Ziploc bag in case and ice. It'll last up to two weeks in your refrigerator that way. Tastes so much better than if you just put it in the fridge. Trust me, do it this way. You'll be glad you did. I never freeze fish. All right, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add my seafood seasoning to my flour. And I'm gonna add a pretty good amount. About like so. The flour kind of dilutes it, of course. I'm gonna mix that up. All right, then we're gonna coat our fillets with the flour. Now you think you go in the milk first, you actually don't. You go into the flour first, do that one time, and then go in the milk. Coat the fillet really good, and set it to the side. Just do enough for one batch. Don't do the second batch yet. Super important, if you let the flour sit on the fish too long, it comes off. You would think it'd be the opposite. You think it'd kind of soak in. Actually, the opposite happens. You don't want it sitting long. I'm gonna do about four fillets, maybe five. Don't want to crowd the pan, of course. By the way, I got a cast iron skillet behind me that's heating up. It's actually smoking, so it's, it's ready to go. Just waiting on me to get done with these fillets. I'm gonna go ahead and do five. Pretty sure I can fit five in that pan. Fingers should look like this when you're done. All right, we're going to throw in some butter. Let's 
See our pan is nice and hot. It's perfect. It smells good. All right, now we put in the fillets. All right, we fit four. We're gonna let those cook till we get a good sear on one side, then we're gonna flip them. All right, there we go, we got a good sear. About perfect. Yeah, that's really good. These are gonna be delicious. All right. Okay, you always cook them half the time on the second side that you do on the first side, which is right about now. Go ahead and take them off. Don't want to overcook them. Never want to overcook fish. Super important. Some more butter in for batch number two. All right, after we take all our fish off, we're gonna cut off the fire. We're gonna add our butter. Kind of deglaze this pan, about that much. Now we're gonna add some green onions. Good thing with green onions, they get soft really, really quickly. Just with the residual heat from this pan, already smells incredible. But we're not done yet. All right, next up, Worcestershire sauce. You've heard me talk about this before, but Liam Perrin's is the best. Add a good amount of that. Then our hawk sauce. Just a few dabs, about like so. If you really, really love hot sauce, hawk sauce makes a hotter version. That's the mildest. I'm not a big fan of super spicy food. I just like the way that stuff tastes, but you can ramp it up as much as you want. You can also put some of that in the milk that you're dipping the fillets into. All right, one more ingredient. I'm gonna add about half of a lemon. I like to squeeze that upside down. Keep the, oh, keep the seeds out of it. All right, that's good. Well, one seed went in. All right, we're gonna stir that up and that's gonna be the topping for our fish. Oh, good, it smells so good. <laughs> All right, four fillets ought to do. I'm gonna just spoon some of this onto there. Now I'm eating this for lunch, so I don't have any sides to go with. This will be plenty for me. Although I may end up stealing another piece or two. All right, here we go. That's how it looks. Hope I don't fry my mouth. Oh. <laughs> You've probably seen me make this before with speckled trout. It's even better with sakale. So good. You saw how easy it was? Just try it home. You won't be disappointed, I promise. Love this. Just a few simple ingredients. All right, well, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the Marshman Masson channel on YouTube. You can do that by clicking that button right there. Also, here's two videos that YouTube thinks you'll like. Check those out if you get a chance. And until next time, if we don't see you in the marsh, or in my kitchen, or in the river near my house, we'll see you right here on Marshman Masson.